Greetings once again. Here we are at House to House DI. We want to thank you all for watching, coming on. Get your pen, paper, uh, your recorder, your phone, put it on record, uh, whatever will help you to uh, remember, to take down notes, to take write down the scriptures that we'll use tonight. But you know, here again, we're back on and uh, it's terabyte week. And the reason why I'm saying terabyte week, because the enemy's mad. I just got back from Fresno, California. We had a tremendous time. Uh, Apostle Eddie Maestas, his wife, Arcieli, Arcelli, and myself, Virgie, and I. And then we met a bunch of other elders, apostles, prophets, uh, fivefold ministries. And we came into a unity of love and unity, which was tremendous time. But there was some things that the Father opened up to me in Virginia as we were up there. So we're bringing it back home and we're just going to share to our viewers, to some of you that need to really shake yourself alive and come and let go of the past, let go of people that hinder you. If you can't see it, that you haven't entered into your ministry, you haven't entered into what the Father has called you to do, it may be because when you were put in the cave of Adullam to have a relationship with him, you let others in to the cave when the father wanted you to keep everybody out. When David was there and Saul came in, David told everybody to be quiet, don't make a sound. And David's men came to David and said, but he's here. We could take him out right now. We can go ahead and take him out. And he said, don't raise your hand against that which Yah has anointed. So tonight I just want to get back to the scripture in Matthew's chapter uh, 14, ver, uh, actually chapter 13, verse 58, it says, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And he, meaning Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son, Messiah, Jesus, Okay, I'm giving you all the different terminologies, but look what it says in verse 50. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. What's interesting to me is the family that you're connected to are the ones that stop you from uh, having uh, supernatural recall, supernatural signs and wonders. You know, how many of us have, have obeyed the great commission that Yeshua said? And uh, we've been out saving souls. And he said the Great Commission was to make disciples. And he wrote that in scripture. So here again, I'm planting this seed in you. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says, Be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. So I'm going to bring you a slant on what trickery the enemy uses. <laughs> because you need to wake up and really put, I'm fired up because what I've seen and how the Father has strategically strategically used my wife and I and all those that come into my circle of influence to prepare them for such a time as this. Okay, now let's pray. Father, we need eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, keep us humble today. Help us to be what you want us to be in the sight of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and you, Father. Father, it's a laborious, it's laboring to work a job and then come home and study and pray and look at, into the word. But you have a process and you're saying, if you want to rule and reign with me, you got to go through this. Why? Because I'm asking you to move into a place of accountability, of loyalty, of honor. No greater, hallelujah, can a son be to the father that to hear the Father say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. What made you so good and what made you so faithful and what made you a servant? The only thing is when you heard the clarion call, you heard the call of the trumpet sound of the shofar to gather sons, a many-membered body, 1 Corinthians 12. You cannot deny that the Father said the body is many members, not one. And the ear cannot say it doesn't have no need of the foot. And the foot cannot say it doesn't have no need of the hand because the whole body jointly fit together is creating the body. That's why the <laughs> Mashiach, the Christ in the Greek, never left the earth. Why? 
because the body remains here, the head's there, but the body's here, and the Father's trying to connect the head with the body so that we could start manifesting what He wants us to do on this planet. Do you know that the whole state of California belongs to your Heavenly Father? You ought to write that down. The state of California belongs to Yahuwah. Oh, God is a clean word for some of you that are still uh, in training and haven't broke through the veil. Once you break through the veil, it's really easy for you to call him his name. His name is Yahuwah. His name is Yahuwah. His name is Yahuwah. And since we're on that, then the son's name is Yahshua. 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 See, they didn't have a J during the time when the disciples walked. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to read. I want to read you something out of uh, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. It's pretty interesting. Uh, as I was reading Matthew chapter 1, and, and it talks about, let me see if I can find it real quick, because I go through this. Every time I'm trying to do something, I get distracted. But in Matthew chapter 1, let me see if I can find what he was talking about. He's talking about the family. And he's talking about, weren't you a part of, you know, wasn't he a, a car, the carpenter's son? Oh my goodness. I, I, yeah, my mind went, okay, I'm going to stop. Just go back and you find where it talks about Yeshua, his family, and they say, oh yeah, is that, that Joseph's the carpenter's son? They didn't identify with him. <coughs> Okay, let me see if I can... Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, go back to um, Matthew 13. I had to read up a little few more scriptures. Verse 52. Then said he unto them, He speaking, this is Yeshua speaking to the people and his family. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which brings forth out of his treasure things new and things old. Now listen closely. If you're not teaching the old and the new covenant, then you have been tricked to believe that you're just a New Testament believer. The Old Testament was fulfilled, but to make it full, that had to be complete. Now the other half is the new covenant. Placing two halves together, you make a whole. So a wise builder, according to the scripture, he says, he's likened to a man that is a householder. Do you hold, <coughs> do you hold your house in subjection? I'm a householder. I feed it the old and the new. I feed all the way, I take you and I, as we're even right now, go with me to the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, so you can see some. Now moving fast because of the terabyte. Luke chapter 24, hallelujah, verse 27. And this is Yeshua. And we're going to go back to uh, 13, but I want you to see, in and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, Navim, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Yeshua came. Listen to me. He came. John the Baptist seen him in the Jordan River and he said, Behold the Lamb cometh that takes away the sin of the world. He comes to present a whole nother message, a whole nother paradigm. He comes to bring the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the, <coughs> the Sanhedrin court, Caesar, yeah, uh huh. Herod, all them. He comes to bring judgment, the wrath of the Father upon them because they're not willing to submit to the order that is about to be established. John's preparing a people unto repentance. That's what it says in the book of Luke. You study it. I can't go there because it'll stop me, but I want you to see this. Verse 28. And they drew nigh unto the village where whether they went, and he made a as though he would have gone further. He made that he would have gone further. And I got to thinking, why would he say that? But he wasn't talking about going a few more miles. He was talking about going further and opening up to them from Moses and the prophets. Mm. But you and I think of it that we're going further because you're always thinking in unbelief. See, unbelief means that you're literally thinking and reading the scripture. You're not applying it spiritually. That's why 
my whole family cut me loose. I don't even talk to my mom passed. I don't even didn't even go to the funeral because they didn't invite me. They made a covenant with the enemy. They made a covenant that they wrote me off. It broke my heart, but see, my heart belongs to him, so it wasn't broken for too long. Why? Because I'm on a mission. I have a purpose. I know why I'm here. I was sent from the invisible realm of heaven, Shamaim, with a word for a people, for a generation, for those that were going to establish the kingdom once again in the state of California. So now watch the next verse that he says. Verse 29, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. <laughs> you know, the old saints used to say, let's tarry until the presence of the Father comes. And so here again, you, if you don't tarry to get into his presence, you're going to tarry for something else. <laughs> you're going to tarry in a lot of chaos. You're going to find yourself speaking to people you shouldn't speak of. I know they're your sons. I know they're your daughters. I know they're your husbands. I know they're your neighbors. I know they're the opposite. But it says, do not cast your pearls upon swine. Why? Because swine is considered unbelief. That's why some of us still eat bacon, pork chops. Why? Because there's unbelief. We don't really believe the scripture. We condescend and use the word that he said, hey, I sanctified all meats that are coming down. He wasn't talking about meats to eat. He was talking about nations. What he called pure, what he called clean, don't call it unclean. The natives, the African, the Native American Indians, the African, the Asians, the Latinos, the Germans, how do they get along when the Germans killed the Jews? They didn't like each other. The Samaritans, they didn't like each other. That's why when Yeshua sat with the Samaritan woman, she said, how, how is it that you're talking to me? We don't talk with each other. My parents taught me not to mingle with you. And he said, yeah, but see, I'm here because I was I put the mingle under the blood and now the blood has mingled itself with you. Whatever hurts, whatever problems you have, the blood of the Lamb has sanctified you. Now many know Yeshua. Many know Jesus. But how many are living in unbelief even though they know Yeshua? Even though they know Jesus? You mark my words, you're going to see a shaking coming. You think this earthquake was something? That just brought an alert. People that didn't have them in their hearts shook. And they started thinking about everything but the scripture. <laughs> I just quoted scripture when it happened. Virgie was listening to her head said, singing. That's the way we're supposed to be. That's when a heart is full of Him. And, and if you're in a place of unrighteousness, it's not sin. There's no condemnation. Just get right and start walking down the plank. Why? Because there's sharks in that sea. And as soon as you walk to the end of the plank, your life is done. <laughs> but His life begins. And so now look at it in the book of, uh, uh, let's go back, Matthew 13 again. I, I like this phraseology, how in Matthew 13, he says to them, verse 55, jump down there. And it came to pass that when Yeshua had finished these parables, he departed from them. Verse 54, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works how does he do it well then he say early he said i honor my father and my father honors me i wasn't sent on my own he sent me so if you receive me you receive him who sent me my honor is not mine my honor is him who sent me do you honor the word? Do you honor those that have rule over you? Do you honor those that want a, the best for you? You listen, but then you change things around? You have to give honor to them that have the rule over you. Why? Because the Father set them for you to learn, for you to learn how to serve Him who you can't see by serving Him that you do see, or her, or them 
or one another, father, son, father, daughter, father, niece, father, grandchildren. Do you know there's grandfathers raising grandkids today because the dad and mom are in prison? Or the father OD'd and the mom didn't know what to do so she found comfort with another man? This is what unbelief has done. This is what it, why it's destroyed even the body of Mashiach. Now jump up there to, with me. You, you've seen that. He, he, oh, God. Oh, thank you, Father. Okay, and verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James, Jose, and Simeon, and Judas? Listen to it. Now you know that he had brothers and sisters. He never knew that, but he did. And look at what it says. And his sisters, are they not all here with us? What? <laughs> Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. <laughs> Why are they offended? Watch. But Yeshua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Do you know there's two words for unbelief? Apithia and apathia. Unbelief. You don't believe. But see, unbelief, apithia, you can correct by reading and getting transformed by the renewing of your mind. But apathia means you refuse it on your own it's like you put your hands up and no I'm not going to change it. yeah I hear you yeah I read the Bible but I'm going to do what I need to do because I know it's okay it's not you're going to suffer consequences this is why many in the body of Christ today are not living in their expectation because of their own unbelief until we see each other again remember apithia apathia don't die in unbelief rise up because he gave you power to become a son by believing until we see each other again shalom